Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for coming today. Uh, our sponsor is John Deere, but before we jump into that, we'll uh, quick do a quick introduction. Uh, first, we got Anna with UI Design. We got Jane right here with uh, back end, and we got Wiley here with front end. And lastly, my name is Jordan Meitinger, and uh, I'm the deadline commander and uh, overseer slash helper. Um, going right into that. Uh, the John Deere was founded in 1837, and not only does it do ag, but also does other uh, pretty interesting things, uh, such as marine engines, construction, and uh, forestry and lawn equipment. Um, today, the branch of John Deere that we're working with is the electric solutions type of side, which is right here in Fargo. It's not also only in Fargo, it's also an international company, it has over 1,000 employees around the world. Uh, the product portfolio is uh, engine controllers, displays, sensors, and uh, power electronics. Uh, all those items are usually developed here in Fargo, uh, and you'll see why they uh, need our help. So uh, we'll jump into the product overview with uh, Jay. So with the thousand employees they have and the many different products they have, the the underlying project or problem with that is wanting to like do performance, see what they can catch, what is going wrong with it, what's going right with it, who is all having problems with it, and uh, so projects and teams will like usually work on either the same products or different products, and for to like measure that, they have to catch reviews, defects that before like coding, uh, design initiation, testing, and then evaluation outside of system in, in, uh, like integration. Yeah. So they want to they want to centralize all this uh, data into one database you probably located at locally at John Deere and want it to make it easier for potential uh, deployable or to other uh, stores. They want to uh, have a uniform format to allow it to be integrated anywhere or at any sources. And to do this project, they want us to use Python. And with that, the Django REST API um, framework to have uh, callbacks to their repositories, such as GitHub, Collaborator, and CA Agile. And that's what we would get from Django. And to also be more secure, they would have authentication tokens and like dashboards for with the graphs for viewing reviews, defects, and that over time, over where they caught it, and like what project or product it came from. And then for the data schema, it's how projects and teams would come together on who would be together, what would be on the product, and what projects would be on the product, and the overseer of those teams also. And to solve this, we would go to Anna. All right. So what we currently have set up is that we're using mock data provided to us by John Deere. But how it would work in the wild is that they would pull information from their various repositories, such as GitHub and Collaborator. It would then go into our REST API, and we would uh, display the information so that they can see the various defects and uh, update information on the various items they have in all one location. So for this particular project, we are using Django to do the whole uh, REST API database, as well as do the the static part of the website that the user will examine. We're using um, Plotly as well to get the information in graph form and present it back to the user in a format they can see very quickly and understand nuances without having to re-examine data. On our first page, we have a dashboard available where we have the main items available to the company. Um, these will often be things showing product deadlines or number of uh, the number of failures they've had within the last business cycle and things that generally people would want to see when they come in initially. We also have a particular projects page where the if you log in in the corner, 
it will automatically filter the projects based on the team that you're in and only show things in your section. And you can al we also added a favorites button so that the uh, what you want is automatically at the top. And this is an example of where you can adjust the information in the database through a more comfortable UI system. And it will automatically add all the information that's in there as well in the gray form, and then you can type over it for anything you want to adjust. And so here's our basic flowchart of the, the options that the user has when they log in. So once they're logged in, they can view the dashboard, they can go to the REST API or do tokens and they can view the team page or add favorites once you're down towards the bottom. And then while we, oh, sorry, then uh, Jordan will show us the demo. Um, I'll be off screen, but I'll still be uh, working on the computer. So with our demo today, we actually have a running uh, local host currently right now. Um, so this is, a, of course, just like the dashboard, it's interactive, we can click on this gear that they want to see so obviously we don't have any 2018 uh, items in here right now but let's say we just want to see 2020 we can see just 2020 uh, over here is the reviews over time uh, currently we don't have we only have uh, two reviews in here right now so that's why it looks kind of weird um, but yeah that's the dashboard so far uh, we'll log in real quick um, to show the other features that we currently implemented Uh, let's go to the team page. So right now our team page uh, involves just uh, all the team members and the projects the team is currently uh, working on. Uh, from this tip page you can also click on the project and see all the reviews and defects. If we just jump into the defect page you can see where uh, Anna was explaining before. This is the defect page. You can uh, change items in here. Uh, stuff like that. Uh, you need to be the team leader in order to change items because uh, the REST API won't talk back with GitHub and stuff like that. So you need to be able to, once you change the items on here, you need to change the item on the source, which we have this little note on the bottom for them. Um, in the projects page, you guys saw before, we have the nice little favors button, uh, which is using cookies, which was a really interesting experience that we learned with uh, Django, uh, with the different formatting with uh, that stuff. So here we add one and delete one. And then here is uh, something that Django does actually really nice with the REST framework. It's an add-on for Django. It allows you to actually see all your uh, URLs for your uh, REST framework, or for your uh, REST API. So if we click on the team, we can see all the teams. And then, uh, yeah, you can add team and stuff like that from here. Um, one will and uh, in order to put in information, we'll show you a quick uh, little script that we came up and John Deere will use to put in information. So uh, right here we have a nice little script that's just uh, making a little request to the API, or yeah, the REST API. Uh, we're just getting the team right now, which you see right here we have the team, uh, A team, B team, and C team. Going into our summary, we'll go. We'll switch to Wiley. Yeah, so I'm just going to summarize some of the things that we learned, what we took away from it, and also we want John Deere to take away from it, mainly the project. So um, we want John Deere to be able to use our uh, REST API in order to help them easily summarize all the information that they have stored, all their defects, reviews, all their projects. And if we were able to get all these different sources from GitHub or other ways, all down to the same spot, and we're able to make the graphs so that they can see what they're doing, see what effects need to be done sooner because they've been in the works for way too long, or see the effects who have been assigned to people who are no longer working in the company that need to be moved around, where setting this up so that anything that is needs to be improved can be caught a lot sooner than way too long down the line. And 
We want this project to be able to be extendable to projects and teams so that any teams working with this software can know just their projects, but also be able to see all projects if they'd like to, so and make it easier for them so that they don't get all this data all at once and worry and panic, but able to favorite their projects and only their projects so that they can focus on what they're responsible for. Viewing up-to-date metrics, since we're going to be having a lot of information in this REST API, we don't want information from two, three years ago to be um, right up front all the time. We want it to be updatable so that it's only most recent information with the option that older information can be viewed. And since this was made in Django, we are able to have this Python framework that we can add more Python scripts much, much more easily. As Jordan showed, we can make GET and POST requests from, from and through Python so that it's really easy to make scripts to get all this information and then process it all together. Progress that we've made so far in this project. We have finished working on the database schema. John Deere has provided us with what tables they want. And we are able to really, really easily set that up in models using Django because the Django REST framework system that we use has a lot, a lot of this functionality built in. So just being able to call all, this, all they have lets us set up tables easily. It automatically generates IDs. All we have to do is set up what attributes will be necessary in each of these models. The REST API itself, like I said, Django REST API framework um, sets up a lot of this functionality for us, but we are able to make sure that all of our get, get and post requests work through this REST API and using tokens and the tokens that Jordan mentioned earlier. Lots of UI work has been done, such as the login page and team page right now. Um, we've also experimented with different UI designs, as you might have noticed when we were going through the demo earlier. Um, so we were experimenting with a few to see which ones look the best, I think, right now. We put a lot of work into it, but then we're going to go back to the default Django uh, bootstrap <laughs> CSS because it's really, really nice. <laughs> um, defect review detail page, more UI pages. We've also worked on some Python scripts, such as the test requests Jordan showed earlier. We've also worked on a script that will convert JSON text into an object in Python that can easily access through its dictionary attributes. So it's more, more comfortable for um, developers to you know, treat their information they're receiving as an object instead of having to iterate over a JSON string. What we're working on in the future is still a lot left for us to do. There's so much more UI that we got to get through. Um, We've got a lot of documentation done right now, but there's still a lot more that we can improve on. And as, and as we start working on these other items on there, we're going to improve our documentation. We got more, more plotly graphs to make, since there is many, many different ways we can display this data. We have only a, a select few that we finished so far, such as defect count per phase or reviews generated over time. We want to get a lot more into some graphs such that we can track how many defects are being caught in the later phases of the project so that we know if the, um, whether we're, con we're containing enough, or John Deere is containing enough defects earlier on in the project. Light and dark mode required on every project. <laughs> Uh, we want to have an option so that developers can save whether they want dark mode or light mode to be set as default for their dashboard and other pages. More, more graphs and tables of information so that individual defects can still be seen as necessary to 
to see whether a certain defect has been open for way too long, or other reason. And then minor changes throughout the project. There's still a lot more that we can do to improve. The next slide. Things that we've learned working on this capstone project, we've learned a lot about how to work together and how to delegate tasks between us. We've learned a lot about working on documentation together as well as how we can improve the project as a whole. And not only delegating tasks so each of us has something to work on, but also so we can work um, as a group at times either pair programming or otherwise. Um, Django Framework was definitely a challenge for a few of us. Jordan has a lot of experience in Django. However, I know I've spent way too many hours just trying to figure out how to set up a Django Framework and then ending up trashing it all and starting over from scratch multiple times. Um, so yes, learning Django Framework was new to a few of us. So we've definitely learned a lot through that. Uh, same with the REST API functions. It's something that is new to a few of us. So we've learned a lot about how to make GET and POST requests. Uh, as Jordan mentioned, tokens was something that we spent a lot of time learning and figuring out how to implement them so that you don't have to log in with every single time you want to GET or receive or post information to the rest of the uh, A lot of work in Python was setting up either test results uh, or uh, Django test modules. CSS and HTML, there was a lot of work put into setting up the UI pages, and there will still will be a lot more left to do as we go forward. And then definitely working with Django's template and static files. We've also learned a lot about working with a sponsor or a boss, um, because we met each week with our sponsor to, see, to keep them posted with our progress, with what we've done, and what we're planning to do, and what we're looking from them for us to do in the future. And which is a key point of our agile development. Making sure that what we're doing is what they want us to do. <laughs> um, and then we had a couple problems in our project for sure. One of our issues that we ran into is we started much, much too late in setting up our Git ignore for the project because we had this project set up on GitHub. And I think it was this last week here when we realized that Django was creating way, way too many PyCache files in our project, such that every single time one of us made a commit to the repo, we would be sending about either 100 or like 1,500 PyCache files when really we're only updating like two lines of code. So recently we've been working with um, removing a lot of those PyCache files that got cached somewhere. And it would have been so much, so much more easier if we started this at the start of the project because it literally would be a one line update <laughs> to uh, keep all those PyCache files from existing in the first place. We have we ran into a couple other issues on the project, such as um, we were worried about not being able to delegate tasks between us evenly, so that there would be one person either not contributing as much as they should, um, and we were also worried about not um, making it clear with our sponsor what we were uh, expected of to complete for the project, and making sure that we what we get done will be beneficial to John Deere. So I think that is most things. Um, do we have any questions? I, I might have misunderstood one part, but it, it seemed like it was almost like you could set up a query to ask kind of questions as opposed to having a fixed report for everything. Yeah. You can uh, like team like for what team you're on and what project you're on. It's like it's not static; it's dynamic. It can change all the time with it. it it's for your own choice. So if I can do that, can I save that so I don't have to create it every time? Uh, we're working on that right now to uh, to.
to allow the user to download like a CSV so that they can view it in like table form and stuff like that? Or are you asking like, do you want like the the queries in static form so it just does it once and then whenever they go to the page? If I'm just thinking if I'm a manager and I have a project I'm looking at all the time and I have the same things I want to know every time. Can I just say, tell me that stuff about my project? And just not have to keep going through all of it. Um, but we'll, um, they didn't specifically ask for that, but that is a good good uh, function that we could implement as uh, they could just do like a, maybe like a table of all the, of a project and just have all the defects and all the reviews so that allows them to see um, all that information on one page. I, I just wasn't sure that was already part of it. Any other questions? <laughs> right, 